Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to do something kind of fun. We're going to try to define the x unit vector in terms of r, theta, and phi. So, so far what we've done is we defined r, theta, and phi unit vectors right here in terms of x, y, and z. So now we're going to return or we're going to turn the tables and we're going to solve for the x unit vector in terms of the spherical unit vectors. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, we need a few mathematical tricks. If you can't think of those, it would be hard to do. But it turns out that when you look at these two equations, we can eliminate the z unit vector by multiplying the top by the sine of theta, the bottom by the cosine of theta, and then adding those two together. And then see what happens to these when we do that. It turns out it will simplify things. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the sine of theta. And then we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the cosine of theta. All right, let's see what we end up with when we do that. So first of all, on the left side here, we get the sine of theta times the r unit vector is equal to, here we get the sine square of theta times the cosine of phi x unit vector plus the sine square of theta times the sine of phi y unit vector plus, and here we get the sine of theta times the cosine of theta times the z unit vector. For the second equation, we get the cosine of theta times the theta unit vector equals, so here we have the cosine square of theta. Notice we have the sine square and the cosine square. Maybe we'll get something here. So times the cosine of phi, they both have the cosine of phi times the unit vector. This should give us some ideas of what to do next. And so here we get the cosine square of theta times the sine of phi y unit vector plus, oh, not plus, it's a minus, minus. So we get the sine of theta times the cosine of theta times the z unit vector. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add these two equations together. So when we do that on the left side, we get the following. We get the sine of theta r unit vector plus the cosine of theta theta unit vector is equal to. When we add these two together, notice we get the sine square theta cosine of phi times plus the cosine square of theta times the cosine of phi, and then we can factor out the cosine of phi, but let me write it out so you can see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a cosine of phi times, we have the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta times the x unit vector. So we add the two together, so we have the cosine of phi times the sine square theta plus the cosine of phi times the cosine square theta, factor out the cosine of phi, and notice that this will collapse down to a one. We do the same over here, so this is plus. We can factor out a sine of phi times, we have the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta times the y unit vector. And then when we add these two together, notice they both have a sine of theta, cosine of theta, z unit vector, sine theta, cosine theta, z unit vector, plus and minus, the z component simply drops out. And then this becomes a one and this becomes a one, so we can write this as the sine of theta r unit vector plus the cosine of theta theta unit vector is equal to, all that's left is the cosine of phi times the x unit vector plus the sine of phi times the y unit vector. All right, remember we're trying to isolate the x unit vector. We're trying to isolate this right here. Now, notice that we started with the definition of the r unit vector, the theta unit vector. Now we're going to include the phi unit vector. So now we're going to write this equation over here. So we're going to write the phi unit vector is equal to, what well, it's equal to minus the sine of phi times the x unit vector plus the cosine of phi times the y unit vector. So now the idea is that we're trying to isolate the x unit vector. So we need to somehow isolate this. And we have the cosine of phi and the sine of phi there. If I can multiply the top equation by the cosine of phi, I'll end up with the cosine square of phi here. 
And if I multiply the bottom equation by the sine of phi, I'll get the sine squared of phi. I do have a negative there, so I'm going to subtract the two equations. That means I'll end up with a cosine squared of phi plus a sine squared of phi times x unit vector. So it's simply 1 times x unit vector. And then hopefully the rest will simplify when we do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to multiply the top equation by the cosine of phi and the bottom equation by the sine of phi. Like this. All right, let's do that. See what we end up with. So here we end up with the sine of theta, cosine of phi, r unit vector, plus here we get the cosine of theta, cosine of theta times the cosine of phi, theta unit vector, is equal to the cosine of phi times the cosine of phi is the cosine squared of phi times the x unit vector. And here I have the cosine of phi times the sine of phi. So plus the cosine of phi times the sine of phi times the y unit vector. And hopefully we get rid of the y unit vector. So let's see that will happen. So here we end up with the sine of phi on the left side. The sine of phi times the phi unit vector is equal to this times this gives us the minus sine square of phi x unit vector. And this times this gives us the plus the cosine of phi times the sine of phi y unit vector. Now they look identical, so when we subtract it, the y unit vector will disappear. All right, so we're going to subtract the bottom equation from the top equation. Uh, my pen is running a little dry here. All right, there we go. So. Uh, on the left side, we end up with the sine of theta times the cosine of phi times the r unit vector plus the cosine of theta cosine of phi theta unit vector minus, minus the sine of phi phi unit vector is equal to now, if I subtract a negative sine squared and I put a cosine squared theta, a cosine squared phi plus a sine squared phi, which is one times x unit vector, and this minus this, in the, since I look identical, the y unit vector drops out, and it turns out, all of a sudden, there we go, the definition of the x unit vector in terms of r, theta, and phi, it's simply sine theta, cosine phi, times r unit vector, cosine theta, cosine phi, theta unit vector, minus the sine of phi, phi unit vector equals the x unit vector. And that's how we define the x unit vector in terms of the coordinates, the spherical coordinates. And that is how it's done. It's easy in Cartesian. Yes, <laughs> Cartesian coordinates. But sometimes using the, uh, the co sometimes you need that conversion. So it's nice to have that handy in case you want to go from spherical to to uh, Cartesian because it's sometimes easier to integrate in Cartesian coordinates. So that helps. All right.